for a fact. Today is November the 4th, 1996. We're in agreement with Alfred Cohen and Shuggy for the uh, Texas Archives of Judaism and for the 4th Jewish Archives Association. So if anyone wants to come up in the future for information, this will be one tape they can work with. Mr. Cohen, where were you born? I was born uh, uh, in Fort Worth on Alston. A L S T O N Street. Do you remember the year? 1918. Okay. And do you remember what block on Austin? It was the uh, 1500 block, and it was next to the uh, Salala. Uh, Days of Allah school. school. Okay. Right. Uh, right. Since then, I've, I've checked. The house has been is not there anymore, and and that block is part of the Salala play, playground. Okay. Uh, so, uh, where were your parents born? My mother and father both uh, were born in uh, England, but they didn't meet each other uh, until they both wound up in Fort Worth for whatever reason. I don't know. All right. Did uh, their parents come from Europe? Uh, I'm not positive where my father's parents came from. Yes, they did come from somewhere in Europe. My brother, who is a genealogist, has done one side of the family, my mother's side of the family, and uh, all my uh, relatives from her side of the family came from Lithuania, Tobolsk, okay. right. Lithuania. Uh, how many brothers and sisters did you have? I had uh, two brothers and two sisters. I'm, I'm the middle child. Okay. How many are still living? Just my brother and I, one brother and I. Uh, do you recall, recall how long you lived on Austin Avenue? I don't recall exactly because uh, my uh, I know that we must have moved to Wichita Falls when I was very young. Do you recall what your father did? My father uh, worked in a retail jewelry store, and, and the name that sticks in my mind is Gilbert. G I L B E R T. Here in Fort Worth? Yes. Okay. Where was your, where was your, where was your mother from? My mother, uh, uh, my mother's family originally, when they came from England, settled in Memphis, Tennessee. But uh, uh, my grandfather uh, was got on the train and was on his way to San Antonio to check out a job when there was a layover here in Fort Worth. He met somebody at the station, and he was a tailor, incidentally. He met somebody at the station, and uh, and they said that there was a clothing store here named August, A-U-G-U-S-T, I August, I think it was. And uh, they, need, they were in need of a tailor. So he decided to uh, put his roots down in Fort Worth. Uh, wasn't the August family also Jewish? Yes. Okay. I recall hearing something about that too when I was young as a child. Uh, so, to your knowledge, Austin Street was the only place you lived in Fort Worth? That's the, yes, that's the only place I lived when I was in Fort Worth. And I, I really, I could have been three, four, five, six years old when we moved away from here to Wichita Falls, but I have no recollection. Uh, do you, do you recall, uh, did you go to school here at Fort Worth at all? No. No. I also forgot to put my yarmulke on. Oh, we won't tell anybody about that. <laughs> we won't tell anybody about that. Uh, while you were still quite young as a child, do you recall, what did you do for to keep yourself busy? When I was a youngster? Yeah, quite. When you were, as, as a baby, small child. Well, uh, I think I grew up liking all kinds of sports because uh, from the time that I can remember, I was always playing ball of some kind and doing something uh, in the way of sports. Can you recall any of the kids in Fort Worth before you moved away? The only one I recalled uh, 
just offhand was uh, a cousin of mine, Raymond Dan. Uh, my grandparents lived on uh, on Sixth Avenue at uh, 1315 Sixth Avenue, and uh, Raymond Dan and his family, Louis Dan was his father, um, Clara Dan was his mother. They lived next door. This was on 6th Avenue, very close to town. Uh, were your parents Reform or Orthodox, do you recall? Uh, my parents uh, were originally were Orthodox. Uh, when we moved to Wichita Falls, they had a small shul and a small temple. So as I recall in growing up, uh, they belong to both. They belong both to the to the temple and to the uh, shul. But originally, they were uh, they were orthodox, as was my uh, grandfather. Okay, if you will uh, turn that around to where that can be seen in the, the camera. And uh, what's it, what was his name, Shuggy? His name was uh, Philip Dan. All right. Uh, he would, he did live in Fort Worth at all, did he? He lived in, he came to Fort Worth uh, in 1904. Okay. And uh, he died here in Fort Worth in 1926. Uh, what, what, what was his occupation again? Originally, to make a living, he was a tailor. But uh, uh, as this thing says right here, he was an expounder of, of Hebraic principles and Zionism. And he was often called Rabbi Dan. Okay. He was a sort of an itinerant uh, type rabbi, although he wasn't an ordained yeah. rabbi. And he used to go to the surrounding towns uh, around Fort Worth and also uh, uh, preach to the Jewish communities there. Uh, what uh, cemetery was he buried in? He's buried in the... Uh, Ar him and the my grandmother are buried in the Ahavath Show. On the uh, university? Yes. Not, not the one by the hospital? No. South Main? No. I do have a uh, an uncle that's buried in that particular cemetery by St. Joseph's Hospital. His name was uh, David King Dan, D.A. Okay. And uh, I've, I've been down there several times but to see the, that grave. Uh, how long did you live in Wichita Falls? I grew up in Wichita Falls and uh, went all through high school there. And uh, in 1937, my older brother passed away in Shreveport, Louisiana. And uh, he hadn't been married very long, and his wife uh, told me to come and get his clothes and things. And uh, when I went there, he had been working for... Uh, Peacock Jewelry, which was uh, Morris Schuster, who was also from Fort Worth. And Morris uh, uh, offered me a job in Monroe. He said there was a, they had a wonderful man over there who was his partner. His name was Max Moses. And uh, I was making $9 a week at Levine's department store, and they offered me $17.50 a week in Monroe. <laughs> And that was twice the money that I was getting. Yeah. So uh, that's when I went to work for Max Moses. Uh, so this was Monroe, correct? Monroe. Okay. Uh, go, going back to uh, Mitchell Falls, uh, at the time you were going up, did it have a very large Jewish community? I don't mean huge, but I mean it. Uh, yes, it had a. It had a. Uh, it was. It was so large to the extent that on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, as I remember, everything except the chain stores were closed downtown. The Pennies and Sears yeah. and places like that were open. But all of the uh, other types of stores were owned by Jews. They were. So uh, they had enough uh, to fill up the, uh, the temple and the Orthodox shul on those holidays. Uh, I'm not very familiar with the situation in Wichita Falls. Uh, can, do you know or have any idea when uh, both uh, 
the show and temple still open there? Or, or, or shut down? I don't know exactly when they opened, uh, but I do remember that uh, that from the time that I was five, six years old, seven years old, along in there, we went to both of them. Now, uh, that would have been uh, in the early 1920s. Okay. So apparently, both of them had been there for quite some time. Hi. Hello. Who is that beautiful girl? I can turn it on with us. Hi. Give Zadie a kiss. Hi. 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 She's coming on. She's coming on with us. Okay, good. Bye, bye Megan. Bye, Zadie. I love you. I love you. Thank you. I love you. <laughs> bye. Have fun. I'm sorry, Shane. That's all right. Her name's Megan. Megan, yeah. This is uh, uh, Shane. Shane. No, Shane. Shane. Present time, does Wichita Falls still have a temple in show, or you know? No, unfortunately, uh, the the Jewish community in Wichita Falls uh, gradually uh, was in a state of decline, and uh, several years ago, uh, the temple uh, sold their uh, their building, and they. Together, they they put the money into the uh, into the it's a conservative show now. And they put the money into the show, so uh, there's just the one there now, and it's not orthodox and it's not reform. It's, it's a conservative. Just, okay. Hi there. Hi. Hi, Hi doll. Hers, but it's Thank fine. You. I'm sharing it with her. So many pretty girls. I didn't know there were so many pretty oh, girls oh, at this yes. show. Yes, oh, there's lots of Thank you. one of them oh, right now. Shake hands, honey. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye-bye. 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 I love you. Bye-bye. See you later, alligator. <laughs> Bye. Okay, here we go again. Do you uh, recall any of the uh, leaders of the Sheryl and Temple there when you were growing up? Who were the rabbis? And I do so know uh, uh, The temple had several different rabbis. I remember a rabbi Goldberg, and also there were some Goldstuckers that uh, lived in Wichita Falls, particularly Paul Goldstucker. And uh, uh, he was like the gabbai, I guess. He he did everything except well, he could, he even did the work of the rabbi when the rabbi wasn't there. I remember. The other one was uh, oh my gosh. I don't remember. What? You think about it. Rabinowitz. 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 Yeah. Rabinowitz. Was that what was that any kin to the Rabinowitz family in Fort Worth? I'm sure it must have been because they came from Fort Worth. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure it was. All right. I uh I uh they used to call him, I'm not sure he was actually an ordained rabbi, although he did everything. And he was the, he was our rabbi at the uh, Orthodox Shul. They used to call him the Shechem. Okay. Uh, would you, would you remember his first name? Would it might have been Hyman? No. Okay. Did he have any children? Yes. He, he, had, he, had, he had two boys and a girl, and the only one I remember in particular was the younger boy who was about my age, his name was Morris. Yes, that's one I know that. Okay, that's 
what I'm thinking of was Bernard and Maurice. So it's a different, different family then. It might have been, or they could have been related. They, yeah. You know, one thing uh, that my brother, in his genealogical uh, studies, uh, found out that uh, sometimes the least that the ones you least suspect are, are kin to you are That's right. related. Uh, uh, was it, I wish I all similar to Fort Worth that everyone indirectly or, or was more or less interwoven as far as being kin to each other. I know as, as a child here in Fort Worth, everybody was kin to each other from marriage or something like that. Yeah, I don't think it was uh, to that extent. Okay. Although there was, yes, there was some like that. Uh, of course, the pillars of the community in those days, as I recall, you know, were people like Morris Zale and, okay. and uh, the Levine brothers, Morris uh, Levine and his brother. Uh, Do you recall when the um, Zales came to move to Wichita Falls? Yes. I have that in here somewhere. Uh, they moved to Wichita Falls. Uh, their uncle, Sam Kruger, had a jewelry store here in Fort Worth. And uh, when they had the oil boom in Wichita Falls, which was around 1918, about the time that I was born, uh, Sam thought that that would be, Sam Kruger thought that that would be a, uh, a good opportunity to go there and uh, Open a jewelry store to these newly rich people, and also he invested quite a bit in oil there. That was about 1918, and uh, it wasn't much after that that uh, that his nephew, who was Morris Zale, came to Wichita Falls and went to work for him. That's from Fort Worth. To from Wichita both of them from Fort Worth. Did you ever meet the uh, old man Zale? I never met Sam Zale. That, that, that was father. That was the father. The name was actually the name was Zalewski. The name was Zalewski. Yes. Yeah. Just uh, like Lipsy was Lipsy. Right. You're right. 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 I can still recall him as a child in the synagogue. Sam uh, and his wife's name was Libby, who's also that was also my uh, my grandmother's name, my buddy. Yeah. Her name was Para Libby. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about uh, elementary school? Do you recall the name? Yes, uh, the, element, the elementary school that we went to was Crockett okay. School, which was just a couple of blocks from our house. And Junior High? Junior High was Zundelwitz, who was okay, Jewish. The Zundelwitz. The school? Yeah, and uh, he was, was Jewish. Was named after a Jewish person? Yes, sir. He, well, he gave him the land and, okay. and some money to help build the school. Very nice. And Senior High? Senior high was just Wichita Falls You just high had school. one high school at that time. At that you? time, uh, Wichita Falls High School was the only high school there. Okay. They were a powerhouse, I think, in football and so on. I played on the, in 1935, my last year in high school, I played on the first Wichita Falls high school team that ever got as far as the state semifinal. The only two teams to beat us that year were Greenville and Amarillo, and those were the two teams that met in the finals. Amarillo Sandys, I remember that, yeah. And my son, my son Richard, in 1961, was on the Wichita Falls High School team when they won the state championship. So yeah, we we played sports. <laughs> uh, 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 when you went to Wichita Falls, it was in the run uh, well, roughly 1918, is that correct? 1918. No, I was born in 1918. Okay. I probably didn't go to Wichita Falls until the early 1920s. I, uh, when it came to transportation, you actually had cars then? No, we didn't have a car. Okay, what We you always mean? rode the train. You say train, clarify that. Uh, Fort Worth and Denver. Okay, inside of, which, inside of Wichita Falls? Oh no! Uh, I mean, like, no. In 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 Wichita Falls, okay. we rode buses and streetcars. Okay. That's I thought you meant to come that's back to Fort Worth. So you have buses and streetcars. Buses and streetcars. Okay, that's right. In fact, the 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 times that we came to Fort Worth and to Dallas, 
and we would want to go like to, but we had an aunt in uh, Corsicana. Uh, we would ride what they had then was called the interurban. Mm -hmm. was, that a, was that the same interurban they used to have here between Fort and Dallas? That's right. It is. I recall that too. It's very interesting. Uh, while you were going to go to junior high and senior high, uh, what did you do for social activities? Well, my daddy died when, when he was 46 years old, and I was nine. And my do, do you recall where he died from? He died from uh, a kidney infection, which was referred to at that time as Bright's disease. Okay which nobody dies from anymore yeah. because you have the, all the antibiotics. But anyway, he died in uh, 1927, the year after my Zadie died. And, uh, and Mama, uh, may her soul rest in peace, old uh, she raised, well, my oldest sister was old enough to go to work. Uh, but Mother raised uh, the rest of the four of us uh, selling insurance during the Depression when nobody had yeah, any money. I was going to say, that is a rough field to get into. Even the good times, it's a rough field. My sister, my oldest sister, who passed away last March, this past March, uh, was Morris Zale's first secretary. My youngest sister, in later years, was also his secretary. Uh, not that it has anything to do with Fort Worth, but my brother and myself and my two sisters all together had over a hundred years with the Zales that we've gotten. Total. Uh, Morris Zale, was he much older than you? Morris Zale died uh, a couple of years ago, uh, and he was um, 90 at the time. I would have been 76. So, uh, 86 and five. He was about 15, 16 years older. For a man that, uh, again, it doesn't have anything to do with Fort Worth, but for a man that never got past the sixth grade in school, Morris Zale was a, a genius. I met him one time uh, when we were going to Little Rock, Max's funeral. He was on a plane with us going up oh, he was. to his funeral. That's the only time I ever recall meeting him. Morris was a... Uh, see, when Morris went to work for his uncle in, uh, in Wichita Falls, uh, he, he decided that uh, he would like to have a store of his own. So he went to Graham, Texas, and uh, he went into a drugstore there, and the guy uh, agreed to rent him enough space to put in a jewelry counter. So he was in Graham for about a year before the Ku Klux Klan ran him out. No kidding. Yes. He had to leave or he felt like he would get hurt. So he moved back to Wichita Falls. His, uh, his uncle Sam Kruger helped him uh, to uh, open a jewelry store on the corner of uh, 8th and Ohio, and uh, he just, he went from there. I'll be darned. That's very interesting. Yeah, he, and it's, it's, I have this, uh, this is a very interesting book on, on my side, this book right here. Uh, we'll scan before we leave. Uh, you, were you from Mitzvah in Wichita Falls? I was born Mitzvah in Wichita Falls at the, at the uh, Orthodox of uh, Samia. I was confirmed at the temple. You were? Yeah, because at the time, uh, most of the Jewish uh, kids uh, went to uh, the temple for Sabbath school. They used to go every Saturday morning to Sabbath school, and the shul didn't have that. No kidding. Didn't have it uh, mainly because, uh, uh, like I said, most of the families belonged to both. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
I guess it was they. I guess they probably didn't have the teachers at the shul that they had at the temple, because it all had to be volunteers. Uh, when the high holidays came, we got Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. How did you go to shul or temple? We went to. Uh, we would always go to the temple on the night on the uh, eve of the holiday, and then we would go to the shul the next day. And the mode of transportation was walking, or? Uh, we always, I did have an aunt uh, there that had a car. We never had a car. Uh, we either rode the bus or the streetcar, or my aunt took us. Good. My, my mother, I have a little note here that, Good. that my mama married in the old Hebrew Institute building. In Fort Worth? Yes. Good, I'm glad you. In uh, 1907. And her maiden name again was what? It was Dan, D A N. Okay. And uh, your father, so was that your father, it's Cohen. Lazarus Cohen was his name. And it was the Hebrew Institute. Does it tell the rabbi's name? Big part. Does it tell the rabbi who married them? This was my mother. And father. Oh, good. That was their marriage uh, picture. Your mother was beautiful. She was a great lady. Wonderful picture. These were some of my relatives. This was taken in Fort Worth. And it's, uh, that's the little girl is my sister, so she couldn't have been more than a few, you know, six or seven. This was at your house? That was at our house on Austin. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. If you, if you hold those up, like right in front of the camera, it'll, it'll somewhat show up. I'm sure the boats I don't know if it'll show up on there, but, uh. Okay. Yeah, it's showing up in here, so. That oh, it is. This uh, this was my Aunt Ray. This is my sister, uh, Miriam, although everybody called her Goo. Over there. Everybody called her Goo, <laughs> just like they call me Shuggy. Shuggy, take my pencil and point them out again, if you will. This is my Aunt Ray, and uh, this was my sister Goo. This is my mama. This is my daddy, my father. This is my Uncle Phil Kleinman, who was her husband. And this is my Aunt Bernice, who was not married at the time. My, uh, my grandmother had like 12 children. And she outlived uh, seven of them. My sister that I told you about a while ago that passed away, uh, in March, uh, was the oldest, she was 88 years old, she was the oldest living person that was ever in our family. She was 88. Nobody in my family ever lived to be that old except her. Well, you're going to have to top that. <laughs> the way it looks, you probably will. I don't know. Uh, I have to tell you that uh, it's the situation is very hard. Uh, I don't know if you know it or not, but my wife uh, two years ago had a paralyzing stroke, and uh, his daughter is the social worker that comes out to the house with the home health people. Uh, we moved her home uh, about a year and a half ago, and, and uh, I've lost about 30 pounds. <laughs> but it, it's, it's a difficult situation uh, when, you're, when you're a caregiver. Don't misunderstand me. I wouldn't want it any other way. I have to take care of my wife, and I want to take care of my wife. We've been married 
56 years. And uh, I love her very much. That's a mystery right there. Yeah, thank God uh, she can talk to me. She's paralyzed on her left side and uh, she can't walk or anything like that. But she can talk to me. And boy, that's a blessing. I can and tell how. you that's a and blessing. How. I'm very fortunate in that respect. I sure am. But don't give up, Sri. Well, I'm not going to give up. I'll tell you the greatest uh, therapy that I have is uh, is Linnell Bond. Is she? Yes, she okay. is. She comes and talks to me once a week, and it's it's like while I'm talking to her, it's like I'm rejuvenated. She's, she's a, very much like her mother. She's a. Good I don't girl. know Beverly that well, but uh, your daughter is. She's, she's the best. Thank you. I appreciate she's something you very else much. again. Is there something there you want to read? No, I was going to tell you that that my grandfather was called a Magid. I guess that means a storyteller. Okay. And he was an itinerant rabbi who preached in small East Texas towns on Judaism and Zionism. And like I said before, he's buried in the Harvest uh, Shalom Cemetery with my grandmother and my brother. And... Uh, According to, I just had this little notation here, according to the Memphis census records of 1900, Philip Dan uh, arrived in the USA in 1880. And uh, they, they lived in Memphis until they moved uh, uh, here to Fort Worth. Let's stop for a second. Yeah, he came to Fort Worth in 1904. All right, sir. Can we continue? Well, it, it, there's a... This is part of... Uh, my brother is a genealogist, as I mentioned, and this is, in 1980, we had our first family reunion on my mother's side of the family. We never got, he never got to the Cohen side. And it says here that uh, uh, he, that my grand, my Zadie was a Magid, and a Magid is a sort of a revivalist lecturer and storyteller. And uh, they frequently traveled into the surrounding areas on speaking engagements. Uh, Philip, that's my Zadie, referred to in Texas as Rabbi Dan, frequently spoke on the subjects of Zionism and Hebraic principles. He was extremely learned. He was extremely learned in the teachings of the Talmud, the authoritative uh, commentary on the Torah. Uh, he even owned the complete set of the Talmud and was so expert in its interpretation that lawyers and judges sought him out to determine rulings contained therein on legal questions. Although he was stern in appearance, Philip uh, possessed a sharp wit and a keen sense of humor. Mm. Uh, I, nobody in those days ever smiled when they took a picture. And I, I remember seeing my Zadie, but he always was just like the picture. You know, he was very stern looking. But he did have a good sense of humor because he and my Z and my Bubby both always, and they never called me by the name, by Shuggy. They always referred to me as you bum. That was their name for me, <laughs> you bum. Uh, where did you get to the nickname of Shuggy? The only thing that, uh, that I've been able to come up with is that it does not stand for Meshuggah. Uh, I think that when I was a baby, uh, my mama referred to me as sugar, as sugar, sugar, and okay. it just got shortened to sugar. That makes sense. So uh, my family all had, uh, all the kids had nicknames. When uh, you graduated from high school, did you go to university? No, uh, we were. 
We were too poor okay. to go to college. All right. uh, well, let's to go this route then. When you graduated from high school, what did you do? Okay. Uh, this was in 19. I uh, gra actually graduated in January of 36. I graduated at midterm. And I was walking to town one day, didn't have any money to ride the bus. And uh, uh, a man stopped and picked me up, and he was the father of a fellow that I played high school football with. And he owned a lumber yard. And he said, I, I don't really need you, but uh, he said, if you'll come to the lumber yard, I'll give you a job. I'll pay you nine dollars a week until you can get a job somewhere. Good man. So I worked there for probably three or four months, and then I got this uh, job at Levine's department store, doing everything for nine dollars a week. <laughs> uh. Also, who was the manager of the Levines? The manager of uh, Wichita Falls Levines at that time was a fellow named Sid Zuckerman, Z-U-C-K-E-R-M-A-N. And uh, I remember being in his office one time, just to give you an idea, if you think my $9 wasn't very much. He was manager of this big department store, and I saw his paycheck on the desk, $50. A week. He made fifty dollars. That a time, week. though, that was pretty good money. This was in the uh, well. This was about 1936. Yeah, that, that was good money at that time during the depression. Well, I thought it was a lot of money when I looked at the check. Of course, as you look back, you think, You're right? You know, I was yeah. I was paying my sitter uh, that came to sit with my wife. I was paying her fifty dollars a day just to sit with my wife. She didn't do anything but watch television and read the newspaper. That was it. Well, I paid her seven dollars an hour, and she worked seven hours, so it's forty-nine dollars. Okay. Takes care of that. One, I forgot to ask you one question. Did your mother and father talk Yiddish? My mother, my father, and and uh, and my grandparents, and my aunts, and my uncles always talked in Yiddish. Always. But although. I wasn't very good at it. Okay. So we're, we're saying that you weren't very good at it. We'll just leave it that way then. Okay. From uh, Levine's and Wichita Falls, where did we go? That's when my brother died in Shreveport, and I went to get his clothes. His wife asked me to come get them. And uh, that's when I went into the store and met Morris Schuster, and he offered me the job in the Morning. Are all these people originally with Wolf and Clark? Yes, absolutely. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, in 1937, when I was working for your brother in, in Monroe, a young man from Fort Worth also came to work uh, at Peacock's in Monroe, and his name was Joel Clark. Oh, sure. And Joel is still here. He's still here, still living. I know yeah. Joel well. Good part of the uh, Wolf and Clark family. Yeah. Yeah, no, well. well, that's Louise Lipschitz's yeah. brother. Right, right, right. Uh, the uh, Wolf and Club organization really broke in most of the jewelers in this area. Yeah, I guess they did. A bunch of them worked for them in the past. And you, you stayed with them right up the hallways after that? I were, I, well, it, it wasn't but uh, about five years later that uh, they bought uh, a jewelry store in Little Rock called Stiff's. And your brother Max went up there to take that store. And they brought another Fort Worth boy to take the Peacock store where I was. And his name was Mel, M-E-H-L. And he looks exactly like these pictures that you have That's out here. Is he part of the Mel family? Yes, his name, his name was Nate Mel. Nate Mel uh, was there maybe a year when uh, he was inducted into the service, and 
your brother Max came to Monroe and I was like 22 years old and he said Alfred my real name is Alfred he said Alfred do you think you can run this store and not being a shy kind of person I said absolutely Max certainly I can run he said okay from now on you're the manager that was in ninth that was uh, that was about uh, early in 1941. Well, it was about the middle of 1941, and uh, I was manager there until I left to go to work for Zales in uh, January of 1947. All right, what Zales store were you at? Number one. Wichita Falls. Well, you went back to Wichita Falls. Right? Yeah, I, I went to see, uh, I called Morris Zale, and uh, he said, well, I want you to go to Amarillo and talk to Ben Lipshey, and uh, he'll put you in a store somewhere. So he said to me, would you like to go back to Wichita Falls? And I said, yes. So that's where he sent me. Did you know a family in Wichita Falls? I'm not sure of the name. Is it Hoffman or Kaufman? Oh, the, the Kaufman family. Yeah. Sure, Morris Kaufman. Uh, he was a man a little bit older than I am. Oh, yes, he would be much older. I think he had a daughter. His daughter was uh, Shirley. Okay. I went up there a couple times. The, the wife's name was Ada. Over late breath to uh, talk to him twice. Yeah. The name just rang a bell. I wasn't sure. In a small town like Wichita Falls, you know everybody. Yeah. There isn't anybody you don't know. Well, Mr. Shuggy, I think we have really pretty well shot at you going from zero to where we are now. And I think it's a very good interview. Well, I, I don't I know. I want to thank you very, very much. I didn't know when I started if I would be able to contribute much of anything. Well, I think you did a very good job. And we're very pleased. Now, when this uh, thing is complete, uh, we'll, we'll give you, leave a copy for you so you have your records. Uh, anyway, see if let's do it together. If, if you would be interested, I would be very happy to leave this, if you'd like to skim through this Zale book, and then you can just give it to Linnell and she can bring it I'll back to I'll be glad to. I'll be glad to. Because, uh... Do you recall the old Wolf and Clark catalog they used to have? Way back when? Years ago, Shuggy? They used to have a real thick gun catalog. Oh, yeah, yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Max <laughs> used to have that at home all the time. I'll t I'll, of course, I've told you this before. And uh, when you're a kid, 16, we'll say, and a girl is three and a half years younger, 10, you don't look at a girl right 10 more. years old, or, or right. 10 and a half or 11, something like that, you know. Uh, you're looking at 15, 16 year old girls. So they sat, uh, their family sat uh, two benches in front of us, and I never paid any attention to them. I mean, I could see her and I knew her, but I didn't ever, you know, make a point of talking to her. And her, her brother was much younger, so he was uh, not in my uh, group that we ran around. If he'd have been older, then we would have been associating more, I, and I would have met, knew her a little, her a little better. But. Uh, Later on, uh, when uh, she was around uh, uh, 17, I think it was, uh, 16 or 17 uh, years old, uh, they had uh, the Sisterhood or, or one of the Jewish organizations, they would always have uh, a coming out of the debutantes of the Jewish community. I remember that. And, uh, they had this one at the old Blackstone Hotel, and uh, and so I was there, and uh, and she was uh, one of the debutantes coming out, so 15 or 16 at the time, and uh, so uh, I was there, and I don't remember whether I had a date that night or not. I just I just don't recall, but I was there, and uh, uh, David Sampson, as you know, uh, too, he was there. And uh, so uh, when, they, when, when uh, she came out in front and, and 
walk out in front of the uh, group. I don't know, you know, how they he's take a bow or something. No. I said to David, I said, David, do you know who that gal is? <laughs> I said, and he said, yeah. He said, I've been going with her. <laughs> he said, that's Eleanor Klotzman. I said, well, would you introduce me to her? <laughs> that's funny. And so uh, David introduced me to her, and then I had a dance with her. And, and uh, then uh, that's how we, we, we I, I'd seen her, you know, younger days yeah. at synagogue, but well, she's all dialed up and older now, and made you know, a big difference. So that's how we got acquainted. And, uh, and then I had a hard time getting a date with her and and, uh, and, and with her parents' permission and so forth because of her age. But we did. And then we got engaged when she was 17. And we got married when she was 18. And uh, the whole town was uh, going nuts because it said all of uh, Mother Lil, that's my mother-in-law, cronies here, thought that uh, we were that the family was crazy to let her get married to she that was age. Baby. Yeah. But that wouldn't uh, that kind of marriage, marrying a guy twenty one years old and she was eighteen, that that marriage wouldn't last long. But I they didn't realize that I'd been working since I was thirteen and I already had a nest egg set aside and had a nice car and, and I you know, had a future uh, where most kids can they get out of time they get out of college just starting in, right? Now when did you get married? What year? Uh, we got married in 1938, January the 16th, 1938, and so that's uh, uh, married 58, 58 years, years yeah. and almost in January be 59 coming up, a couple and, of months. Or and so. he had one child, right? One son. Was it? Okay. And uh, that was it, Arnie. Uh, can you recall who some of your closest friends were when you were a kid? Well. Uh, there was quite a number that I was pretty close to. The Irving and Melvin Rosenthal were one that I mentioned. And uh, then there was uh, uh, Woodard Glazier, and uh, there was Sam Schwartz, uh, Morris Schwartz. I don't know if you remember Morris Schwartz. Sure. And, uh, uh, well, gee whiz, there was a whole group that uh, Nathan Frankel. Uh, okay, I just interviewed his wife. Huh? We just interviewed his wife. Oh, did you? Yeah. Pauline. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I did uh, uh, Pauline's uh, sister did you? in Dallas when we used yeah. to go to Urban Road and Pauline and I and, and Nathan Franco used to go over <laughs> and, and, uh, and date. And uh, Urban was dating a girl and, uh, and uh, Nathan was dating Pauline and then I would date her sister. Were you and Maurice Rabinowitz about the same age? Maurice, no, Maurice was older than I was. He was older. Yeah. And did, or my brothers, is your age older? Who? And you oh, Dodgy Moses was one of them. He was one of your, your Yeah, age. he was one of ours in, in school. And he was, he was uh, what, a half-brother to you, wasn't he? Yeah. And, uh, How about Joe? And uh, well, I was going to say, you had, uh, there was the Moses boys, uh, there was one of them tall fella. Well, that was Joe, and there was also Max. Uh, with the there jury was three brothers. Are, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, now, wait a minute, I don't know how old, uh, Adagio was more closer to our age, okay. and I think Joe was, wasn't he? Joe, well, Adagio was a baby, Yeah. and then Joe came in next. Joe was next, yeah. that's what I was thinking. Okay. Those two, uh, Max was already older. Yeah, he worked for Wolf and Clark. Yeah, he was already yeah. more uh, mature. Yeah. But uh, Joe and... Uh, and Dodgy was uh, more closer to our age, and last I heard, he was in Lubbock, and then he was in El Paso, and right. the auto business, and yeah, he retired, right. yeah. and yeah, I used right. to keep up with him for years right. back, but uh, not now. And, uh, well, there was quite a number, of, unfortunately, there, a lot of them are not here today. Well, that's but, natural. That's you know, that's what's sad. Uh, Leon, I think we covered the whole gambit. And I really think you did a very, very good job. It was a very, in my opinion, a very good interview. And when the Mark gets his time, we will come by and bring you a copy of it that you can keep. Well, I could tell you more. One thing that uh, I think that <laughs> reference to the Jewish Federation okay. and also right. about the right. uh, 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 B'nai B'riah. Uh, B'nai B'riah. Uh, <coughs> when I was a kid, uh, 
They didn't have uh, the, they had beneath it, but it was dormant. Uh, they had uh, uh, no uh, uh, AZA here. And uh, so uh, I, I had heard about the AZA, and, and then uh, since I.E. Horowitz lived in the same block that we did, and I used to go to their house all the time, they had the kid Buddy Horowitz there, you know. And, and he had two kids that were around our age running. Also, he used to come to Caps Park. And he's mentioned that uh, they ought to have an AZA here. And he explained it to us. Well, I.E. Horowitz was really the responsible for getting Willard Glacier, Rosenthal, Melvin, and uh, Mars uh, Schwartz, and all of us together to found and start up the AZA in Fort Worth. Do you recall what year that was in? Uh, well, yeah, let's see, I think I got it in here. <coughs> Hold it off for a minute. and charter member of the B'nai B'rith Boys or the AZA. Who was the first and the past president of this organization. Who was the first president, do you recall? Do you have that in there? Huh? Who was the first president? I don't remember, but I think it was Willard Glacier, but I wouldn't remember. And you were one of the early presidents, too? And it was one of the first presidents, <coughs> okay. yeah. I think Willard was the first one. All right. And uh, if you'd like, I could read you this here uh, by, by my Bi biographical data without this thing on, and then anything you want in here. It's up to you. Yeah. Can you, you cut want, that off? Yeah. You don't want it on? Well, I don't think you'd want to hear all of this stuff here. Well, you can cut it off and on as it goes. If it to. Uh, I can read it to you, and then you can see if uh, if you want. Let's this is on. just my biographical. Okay. 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 Go ahead. I'll leave it on and he'll edit it. Leon Gaston was born January the 17th, 1916, and is a native of Fort Worth, Texas. He attended public schools in Fort Worth. Graduated from Central High School, now known as Pasco High School. In 1934, he attended North Texas Agriculture College, Arlington, Texas, now known University of Texas, Arlington. His business affiliations are as chairman of the board of the following organization, Gashman Metals and Recycling Company, founded by his father, Jack Gashman, 79 years ago. This was made up in 1992, so that's four years ago, so it's 83 years ago. And Dard Realty Company, which is uh, another one in Fort Worth. His trade associate affiliation include past president of the Gulf Coast chapter of the Institute of Scrap Iron and Steel Incorporated. He served two three-year terms as national director at large of the Institute of Scrap Iron and Steel, Washington, D.C., and has been on various other national committees in the past years. He was also a member of the National Association of Secondary Material Industries Incorporated, served on national and regional committees, as well as vice president of the Metal Division in 1957. Now both organizations have merged into the Institute of Scrap Recycling Industries with headquarters in Washington, D.C. They have served in the past years on the Southwest Regional Advisory Board of Anti-Defamation League of B'nai B'rith and in 1958 served as Texas State Association Membership Chairman. He served as Israel Bond Chairman for Fort Worth in 1958 and as Co-Chairman in 1959. Member of the Harvard Shalom Synagogue and served on the board. Member of Bethel Congregation, having served on the board of this congregation at various intervals through the past years. He has served several terms in the past years as a member of the board of directors of the Jewish Federation of Fort Worth and as a past president serving from 1968 to 69. Past director of the Dan Dancinger Jewish Community Center of Fort Worth and is also one of its founders and a charter member, which is too bad what's happened to it though. Leon Gaston enlisted shortly after the attack on Pearl Harbor as a private in the Texas State Guards. He attained the rank of major on, in, on active reserve after World War II. He was on active reserve status until 1965. He also was a member of the Texas State Guard Association. He was a Rotarian, served as a director of the Northside Rotary Club, member of the Elks Club, and a 32-degree Scottish Rite Mason and Shriner. He recently received a certificate for 50 years of membership in the Scottish Rite Masons and 50 years in the Shriners organization. 
member of Friends and Boys Club of America, life member of the University of Texas Dads Association, a member of the Texas Manufacturer Association, former Chamber of Commerce, served on the Trinity River Development Committee of the Chamber of Commerce through the past years, worked on various other civic committees. In 1969, Leon was a recipient of the, the A. Brick Jewish Man of the Year Award of Fort Worth, Texas. In 1967, Leon was vice chairman of the National Conference of Christian and Jews campaign dinner, and he served in this capacity a few times through the past years. And in past years, he also was appointed to serve on the Fourth Committee of the Crime Commission to prevent crime in the city. In 1938, Leon married the former Eleanor Klotzman, also a native of Fort Worth. They have one son, Arnold Gene Gashman, who attended Texas University and graduated from Texas Christian University with a BA, BA degree in finance. In 1974, Arnold was elected president of Gas and Metals and Recycling Company, Fort Worth. In March of 1992, Arnold was elected national president of the Institute of Scrap Recycling Industries, headquartered in Washington, D.C. Israel was a merger of the former two trade associations. Arnold is married to Harriet, who has her own business, Harriet Gashman, Interiors Incorporated. They have a son, Eric, who is a graduate of Texas Christian University, and a daughter, Alicia, who is a graduate of the University of Arizona. Leon and Eleanor reside at 4324 Hartwood Circle in Fort Worth. Now, I don't know if there's anything in there that... That's not and, good. and then, uh, also, that, uh, uh, I, uh, in 1992, uh, I was honored for 50 years, lifetime B'nai B'rith member. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing is that uh, uh, it was actually, if you include the AZA, which yeah. was a, 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 had been, you know, instead of 56 years, it would have been 60 some odd years. Yeah. But uh, then, uh, but going back, the, the Hebrew Free Loan Association, which you're now president, I think, aren't you? Yeah. And uh, that organization was a very worthy organization yeah. through the years, and it saved a lot of families back in the early 30s, uh, particularly mm -hmm. when the recession was on. And uh, my dad was <coughs> active of them reactivating the Hebrew Free Loan back in those days. It had been there for years, but it was inactive. Yeah. And my dad and Sam Laves and George Weinstein, yeah. and there was a group all kept it going, yeah. that uh, started it off and kept it going, and uh, the Labwitzes, and uh, oh, uh, there was quite a number, uh, and Antons, and they all got the thing going back again. Let's see, and, same thing happened. And now, now it's going yeah. on again. Yeah, but the, again. the thing about it, though, it's a little different ball game, Marty. You, know, you got that off? No, it's on the top. Oh, wow. I didn't want to tell you what I was going to tell you about, tell us, about the Hebrew free loan deal. I, I, that, that part that I was going to say, that, that's no use talking now. Can we turn it off? Yeah. Yeah, I turned it off for a minute. Man, no joke. I was in this time 35 years old, so what? I could work. And I said to Tannenbaum, I said, who is the big market? He was already here two years. Tannenbaum came in later. He said, I got a cousin here, and he's a very big mother in the show, Jack Friedman. I went to Jack Friedman, and I talked to him. And I said, listen, I'm young, and I don't care what I'm doing. I can work in the yard, I can work in the kitchen, I can work everywhere. I can do everything what I want to make mothers. So just to have enough to get around. In this time, was working over there in the old synagogue, a tall guy, a very blonde tall guy. I forgot what his name was. Who gave in this tall guy? It was a Jew, what they made the trailers. You remember? What, Salem? Uh, the trailers to, to sleep in the, to sell. What is his name? A people. Henry Salem? Who? Henry Salem? I, I, I forgot who. She didn't die too long, maybe for four or five years. Who was that? that from the, she was on the ice. Walensky. No. 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 Okay. She was over, what did he die? The son comes to the services here. Henry Salem's Probably, probably Henry Salem. It is Henry Maybe. Henry Salem. Okay, so he was working, he gave him in. The show was a year old. Abelo Nebuch, a little heathen of Oh, hold a minute. He didn't let him in. <laughs> 
but uh, I started off talk to Jack. Okay. He said, it's possible. Why not? You want to work? It's possible. We do it. And I was hired. I was hired by Melvin Rosenthal. My brother. But, yeah, I know. By Melvin Rosenthal. I was hired. In, uh, I don't remember the second of the lesson. And I was hired by Melvin Rosenthal. I came in and show. Abelus started <laughs> talking to me. He cannot go Yiddish. He cannot go English. He said, Max, I want to make breakfast for the services for the kitchen. He didn't want the men in the kitchen. I don't know when. The show was a year old when I started off. I said, Abelo, at the Vistanaga in the kitchen. Oh, I'm talking Yiddish. That's fine. If you want to go into the kitchen, I lodge you into the kitchen. And he got fired. And he went out to go. And I will start off working in the kitchen, making kiddish shabbos, making a breakfast, a yurtzad. For two years, the old shul didn't make any onik shabbat because he didn't want to do it. Two years when I was working, they got only the services eight o'clock in the night, but I got sick, and they went home. Two years. Then the latest auxiliary was a very strong organization of, uh, in the old shoe. And they came to me and they said, Max, we want to make Friday night nine o'clock services and make Konek Shabbat. I said, yeah, why not? So we started off making Konek Shabbats after two years working. And uh, just went on. 25 years over there. Well, Avalo, as you know, was not a strong guy. He did the best what he could. But for him, Spizno, he was very good. He was very good, very nice. So this was the story, but I went in in the shoe. That's it. Well, I hope it's interesting. Oh, are you kidding? <laughs> your life is your life is is